Amos, this seems like Sunday. Uh, well, it is Sunday. You see, Andy, we is on the radio now every Sunday on CBS for Rinso. That's right. Rinso, new Rinso with Solium, the scientific sunlight ingredient, brings you the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Ernestine Wade, the Jubilaires, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorite, Amos and Andy. Last Friday, the Kingfish and his wife, Sapphire, went to New Jersey to spend the weekend with Sapphire's mother. They returned by bus a few minutes ago, and right now they're entering their apartment. Well, I am sure glad that weekend is over. Some of them meals your mama whipped up was really hard to take. George, I don't know what you're talking about. That roast chicken she served tonight was delicious. Listen, your mama claimed that was chicken, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was so chicken. Well, why did she hold the ears when she carved it then? That's what I was... <laughs> on the subject of the dinner table, you embarrassed me to death with your manner. For instance, after dinner, when they passed the taffy. Mm, taffy? Well, what, what do you mean? George, if one doesn't like taffy, one throws it away. One doesn't put it in one's handkerchief. Well, one does if one's bridge work is caught in it, I tell you <laughs> Honey, it ain't my fault. See, I happens to be at the in-between age in life right now. What do you mean, the in-between age? Well, I'm uh, too old to work and I'm too young to collect Social Security. <laughs> uh, well, they got me trapped right in the middle there. George, that's ridiculous. And don't say there ain't no opportunities for a man your age. Why, when we got off the bus a few minutes ago, I seen a little stove for rent right next to the bus terminal. The signs say the rent was $50 a month. Yeah, well, what about it? I was thinking some smart fella could get hold of that and turn it into a place to check baggage. At least 20 buses a day comes in there. Yeah, but who got $50 for the first month's rent? That's amazing. Well, who knows? Some loan company might lend it to you. Loan company? No, honey, forget the thing. That's your trouble, George. You never take my advice. Don't you realize that behind every successful man there's a woman that gives him his inspiration? It's the woman who makes the man what he is. Well, if that's the case, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for doing such a sloppy job on me. You're impossible. I'm going in the bedroom and unpack. Yeah, get in there. <laughs> you don't hear nothing like that. Rent that stove by the bus terminal start a check-in service. Uh, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Fifty dollars rent. Only trouble is, there ain't no loan coming in the city would trust me, though. Wait a minute, maybe I could get Andy to start a loan company and loan me for this. Hey, I'll drop in Andy's office. Uh, pardon me, mister, but if I could, uh, oh, it's you, Brother Andy. Well, who else you expect to find in my office here? Well, it's, uh, just that I, 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 well, I had something else on my mind, Andy. When I passed your office, you see, I... I see you laying back in your chair through the window there with your mouth open and your teeth gleaming. I just naturally mistook you for a loan shark. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a natural mistake, all right. Yeah, well, uh, I got to get on down the street here and give a uh, loan company a break, I guess. Yes, sir. You know, I wish I could throw my business to a friend. By the way, Andy, have you ever considered entering the field of loan sharkery? Mm, no, I ain't, Kingfish. Uh, is that loan business a pretty good business? Well, not only is it a good business, Andy, but anybody that goes into it is performing a great humanitarian service. Uh, how do you mean? Well, uh, take the average man that uh, got a lot of little bills that make him miserable. Yeah. Well, now, the loan company give him enough money to pay all them bills. Mm -hmm. That way he can consolidate his misery into one big lump, you see. Well, I wouldn't mind going into something like that. Uh, tell me this, did a man pay people interest on the misery, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you can soak them anything you want, you know. Oh, boy, that's the business for me. Yeah, I'm going in the loan business. I'll just sit down here and wait for somebody to knock on the door. wonder who my first customer will be. Well, then, uh, I have noted for helping people get started in business. I'll borrow $50 from you. Yeah, well, uh, you'll borrow $50. Yeah. Listen, kid. 
kingfish, I was looking for a bona fide customer. I ain't gonna lend no money to no Welshers like you. Now, listen, Andy, uh, you is in the loan business. I heard you say it, and you can't back out of it now. You was forced to loan me the money under the RFC. The RFC? Yeah, reach for the money or reach for the cash. Either <laughs> This whole thing is beginning to sound a little crazy to me. I think this is just a scheme of yours to get 50 bucks away from me. Why, Andy, does you think that me, a brother in the lodge, would stoop to such a thing? That me, a friend of yours from childhood, would stoop so low as to jip you out of money? Yes, I does. <laughs> well, so much for the stooping. Let's stand up straight and give it a fact, don't you? Yeah, what is your interior motive on this thing, anyhow? Well, now, look, Andy, uh, I done located the store by the bus terminal over here. Now, we run into place with 20 or 30 buses coming in every day. We can make a nice income checking the baggage for the passengers. Uh, all we need is 50 bucks for the first month's rent. Well, yeah, now you're talking. Now, that don't sound bad. I'll be willing to put up 25 if you raise the other half. Well, okay, Andy, that's a deal. Tell you what, I ain't got the whole 25, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sell my wife's fur coat and let her shiver till business gets going. <laughs> Partner, for the last three days, business hasn't been good in this checking stand, ain't it, boy? Oh, yeah, we really got some here, Kingfish. Say, I, it's 12 o'clock, you know. I got to get lunch. And I'm going to stop by the net shop, too. They is learning me how to knit a sweater for Amos and Ruby's new baby. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, well, I'll be back in an hour or so, and then you can go out. Okay, brother Andrew. See you later, Kingfish. So long. So, yo, do. We sure got a lot of suitcases and bags in here. Oh, excuse me. I'd like to get my suitcase. Uh, certainly, miss. Uh, got your check? No, I seem to have lost it. But I can see my suitcase right on the shelf there under number 9 to 8. It's that alligator one. Uh, 98, huh? Uh, uh, well, uh, we ain't supposed to give her no bag without a check. Uh, oh, well, what am I going to do? I can't find it, and I'm in an awful hurry, and all my things are in the bag. Yeah, well, I guess it'll be all right, then. I'll get you, uh, yeah, them things happen. There you is, miss. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I wish Andy would get back here from lunch. I am starving. Uh, oh, excuse me, I didn't see you. Yes, yeah, sir, what can I, can I help you? Hey, yes, I'd like to get my suitcase. Uh, here's my check. Oh, yes, sir, coming right up. Uh, let's see your number here. 98. 98, uh, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh. Is there any trouble about my bag? Oh, no, sir, no, sir, no trouble at all. It just ain't here, that's all. Uh, it's not here. Uh, no, sir, I tell you, mister, uh, the thing you see, we, we, will, uh, I had, uh, we, uh... <laughs> well, that's not a very good explanation. Uh, yeah, sir, uh, but now, listen, mister, if you just give us a little time, I guarantee you that we can straighten this thing out. A little time? Yeah. Look, you, besides that being a very valuable alligator bag with all my clothing in it, there was also over a thousand dollars worth of my wife's jewels. Oh, me, yes. Uh... Now, I'll be back here tomorrow morning at ten o'clock. And if you don't have that bag, I'm going to sue you for two thousand dollars. I'll see you in the morning. Goodbye. Oh, what is that going to do now? If I wasn't afraid of getting drowned, I'd jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. 
I can always tell a Rinso wash. New Rinso gives your wash an amazing new brilliance. New Rinso with sodium gets white clothes, not just whiter, but whiter than new. And washable colors, even brighter than brand new. Now, the reason for the wonderful whiteness and brightness of Rinso wash clothes is sodium, the new scientific sunlight ingredient that's contained in today's Rinso. You know, you can actually dry clothes indoors. And new Rinso puts sunshine in your wash. Rinso is safe for clothes, so kind of hands. So, next time you shop, be sure to get the giant size. It's economical and convenient. Remember, only Rinso contains solely. And now, back to Amos and Andy. <laughs> I gotta see you right away. Well, hi, Kingfish. Sit down. Uh, look here. Some gal in a red dress come into the checking stand that me and Anna was running and stole a suitcase worth a thousand dollars worth of jewelry in it. And I don't know what to do. Gal, yeah, huh? Yeah, female can always give you trouble. Only yesterday I had to serve a summons on a chorus gal. A chorus gal, huh? Yeah, a client of mine was suing this girl, and I had to go up to her place and serve her with the papers. No, oh, I see. Yeah, when she opened the door and I first tried to hand her the summons, she tried to make eyes at me. <laughs> but I told her she couldn't get nowhere with them kind of tactics. No, that just got me to sit on the sofa. Yeah, held my hand, and that's it. Put her all around me, she started kissing me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And she, she, she kissed me some more, she said. <laughs> and she kissed me some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, right and she kissed me some more. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what did she say? Uh, what did she do when you handed her the summons? Uh, what summons is that? Oh. <laughs> What about this suitcase? The fella that really owns it is going to sue me. Well, tell me, Kingfish, what did your partner Andy think about all this? Well, Andy was out to lunch when the whole thing happened. Uh-huh. Now, I think we got something. What is it? The thing to do, Kingfish, is to palm the whole checking business off on Andy. See? Tell him you're leaving town. Oh, tell him you've been drafted to fill a political job in Washington. Yeah, I'll tell him that I've been drafted for one of them... Diplomatic service uh, things or something like that. Stonewall, that's a great piece of advice you done give me that. You has really got what it takes. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you dealing with women, you got to be on your toes. Uh, what do you mean? Well, for instance, now, I had a case coming up this morning, and a woman lawyer was going to pose me. See? It was the kind of case where if she was going to win it, she'd really have to be sharp in court, be right on her toes. Mm. I worked out a scheme to outsmart her. Uh, what'd you do, Stonewall? Well, listen, now, listen, sir. Like I said, see, the case was coming up at 9 o'clock this morning. So last night I got out of bed every 15 minutes and called her on the phone. <laughs> when she answered, I hang up. <laughs> yeah, I know by doing that all night, I'd keep her from sleeping, and she'd really be exhausted in court this morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me this, Stonewall. How did the case come out? I don't know. I was so knocked out, I almost left. <laughs> Kingfish, I was just over to our checking stand at the bus depot, and Lightning said uh, he was there, and he said that uh, you told him to take charge. Yes, I told Lightning to take charge of the place, and uh, I had to come over to the lodge all here, 
provided my resignation letter to you as my partner. Resignation letter? Yes, it's my farewell epistle. And uh, <laughs> I want you to hear it, Andy. Yeah, I'd like to read it. It's a beautiful thing. Here it is. See here. Dear partner, dear. Quote. So long, unquote. <laughs> uh, Sign your disrespectful old partner, George Stevens. Now, don't cry. Andy, pull yourself together. I know you... Wait know. a minute, dear. Wait a minute. Why is you quitting the checking business? Well, Andy, I was invested to serve the government of the United States of America. You mean to say that they're taking old goats like you in the Army? Uh, I've been drafted to serve as a diplomat with the State Department. You see, there's been a big shake-up since uh, uh, Secretary Marshall resigned. Oh, and you mean to say that you has got a job with the State Department? Yeah, it ain't a big job, Andy. Uh, I was going to be under demand as under the Undersecretary of State, you see. Uh, uh, well, that's really a pile-up you was under there. Yeah. I hope I can breathe when I get under there. That's all. But, Kingfish, listen, me and you is in the bag checking business. You can't walk out on it now. Yeah, well, I got no choice, then. As a matter of fact, I've been ordered to report for my physical. Wait a minute. How come you got to take a physical to be in the State Department? Well, you see, Andy, every night you have to go out with a different foreign diplomat and stuff yourself with all kind of foreign food. Crepe Suzette, enchiladas, smorgasbord. You know, that, that stuff really punch holes in your stomach. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would, all right. I heard it would. Why do you think Truman Fitch acted to the Secretary of State? No. Of course, he got a strong foreign policy and a non-acid stomach. That's why. <laughs> so you're going to give up the suitcase checking business and join the State Department, huh? Yes, and I report to the diplomatic boot camp tomorrow morning. Uh, by the way, uh, you might come down to my graduation next month, and it's really an impressive ceremony. Yeah, I guess that's a big day, all right. Oh, yeah, all the students lined up in front of the State Department. And as the band plays the Star Spangled Banner, they present you with your striped pants. Uh, how do they do that? Well, it's just like getting a Congressional Medal of Honor. President Truman pins your pants on you, you see. It's a... Oh, beautiful, oh, beautiful. Part. Well, I guess I'll have to stay back here and carry on the checking business by myself. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and the State Department wants you to sign this paper, release me from the whole mess. Yeah, where'd I sign? Uh, right down the bottom there where it say, I hereby fix here my hand and seal. See it right there? Yeah, okay, yeah. here I go. Mm-hmm. Andrew H. Brown. There he is, Gingrich. Oh, uh, come in, Amos, come in. Oh, hi there, fellas. I was just talking to Henry Van Ford, and I was wondering how you fellas is going to get out of that mess with the suitcase that the fellas going to sue you. Well, so long, ex-partner, dear. That's off to Washington. Stop him, Amos. Stop him. Tackle him around the legs, sir. I, I snapped the lock on the door when I come in there. Yeah, good, good. Now, Amos, uh, what mess about what suitcase and who is going to sue who? Well, I just heard that the kingfish here made a mistake and he give out a suitcase that he didn't have no check for it to some gal in a red dress. And the rightful owner is going to sue both of you for $2,000. What about that, Kingfish? Well, Andy, believe me, I, I meant to tell you about the whole thing, but in the excitement of my new job, I done clean slip my mind, Andy. Yeah, well, you can forget about that job till this mess is cleaned up. We is in this together. Well, okay, Andy, I'll stick with you. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll resign my post with the State Department. But if we have the war, you get your head shot off. Don't come hollering to me about it now. <laughs> Now, let's hear about the most glamorous, exciting contest you ever heard of. First prize, a trip around the world for two, all travel expenses paid, or $10,000 cash. Think of it, all the wonderful far-off places you ever dreamed of in a travel cruise you will never forget. Paris, London, Cairo, Honolulu. That's the first prize. There are 15 second prizes, too. Each a round trip to Europe and 400 third prizes, all cash. Enter this terrific new lever contest right away. Now, here's all you do. Finish this statement in 25 words or less. I like large size Rinso because... Send each entry with a box top from the large size Rinso to Lever Tour the World Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. That's Box 1, New York 8. Only residents of continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii are eligible. Follow the complete rules on the entry blank you get at your store. You, yes, you can win a luxurious, exciting, all-expense trip for two people around the world. Now, back to Amos and Andy. Hello, Shorty, come in. Uh, We 
wheels in a mess. Yeah, wheels been robbed of a suitcase worth two thousand dollars by a gal in a red dress. What must we do? Well, I I I, I get the finest private detective. I, I go direct to the FBI. I, I get the New York City police. I I, I get I, I tell the man I, I treat. I, 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 don't ask me. <laughs> Shorty, this year is the worst mess we've ever been in. Yeah, we thought about going to the police or uh, the suitcase, but with the owner coming back tomorrow morning to sue us, the chances is the police couldn't find the gal at that time. Why, why, why don't you tell the police that she's a dangerous cat and they'll go after her right away? <laughs> That's what we'll do. And then uh, we'll tell the police that you was the one that was robbed because you look a little more beat up to start with neither, you see. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll be the one that was robbed. Yeah, oh, Shorty, thank you a lot. You know you was one of the smartest men alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, fellas, robberies is bad already. I had a hold up in my barber shop once, but, boy, I was prepared. You see, I, 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 was, I was tipped off on this by this pal of mine who, who told me the best thing to do was to fix myself up with, with, with a sawed-off shotgun. A sawed-off shotgun? Mm. And uh, sure enough, that very night, a, a couple of thugs come in and said, Stick them up. I whipped out my gun and put the, put the gun, put it to my shoulder, and as I got ready to shoot, I, I realized my mistake. Oh, what mistake? So I, I sawed off the wrong end. <laughs> Here's the death sergeant over here. Yeah, I would just say, uh, how does this bandage on my head look? Oh, fine. Now, now uh, uh, excuse us, officer, but uh, we come here to report an armed robbery. I was afraid it's the beginning of a terrible crime wave. Crime wave? Uh, when did it start? Well, uh, a few hours ago on my partner's head. Uh, allow me to introduce ourselves. Uh, I is George Stevens, and this year's Andy Brown, who was just unconscious. Unconscious? Likewise. Uh, uh, now, now, wait a minute. Uh, let's get the facts here so I can make out a report on it. Uh, yeah. Well, you see, sir, uh, me and Miss Brown uh, here runs a check stand at the bus terminal. Uh, when I come back from lunch today and walked into the stand, why, well, I stumbled over a lumpy object on the floor. I was about to put a check tag on it and toss it into one of the bins when I noticed it was Mr. Brown here. Yeah, that's right. It was me, all right. Yes, yes. Go on. Well, I realized immediately that Mr. Brown was unconscious because... The blank look on his face was a little more alert than usual, you see. I just, so when I look around, I discovered that the alligator bag, uh, a suitcase was missing, worth $2,000 worth of stuff inside of it, you see. Mr. Brown, since you were the one who was assaulted, suppose you let me have your version of the robbery. Yes, sir. Well, uh, I was standing behind a check stand when a cute young gal walked up to me wearing a red dress. She was carrying a pink lace parasol in her left hand and a blackjack in her right. Oh, she sure was cute. And go on. Uh, what happened next? Well, I smiled at her, and when I tipped my hat, she conked me over the head. And while I was standing there, she wanged me on the head 20 or 30 times. Good heavens, man, why didn't you defend yourself? Oh, I was too polite to strike a woman. <laughs> oh, this woman is dangerous already. Right? Hitting Mr. Brown on the bare head 20 or 30 times. Think of the damage he could have done. Yeah, lucky I took off my hat or she'd have smashed my new derby to pieces. <laughs> Oh, this woman is a menace, officer. Well, I'll notify all the squad cars to be on the lookout for the woman in red. We may be able to catch her unloading the loot at one of the pawn shops. Yeah, sir, you better comprehend her as soon as possible. We'll do that for you. And ain't that wonderful? The police done picked up the gal last night. Yeah, they really worked fast. But how come we had to come down here at the police station this morning? Yeah, well, we got to prefer charges against the gal and see if they picked up the suitcase. Andy, wait a minute. Here comes the sergeant now. Come on, boys. We've got the girl in the cell down the hall here. Yeah, we want to speak to her, all right. We really got some fast action on this, didn't we? Oh, yeah. And I want to give this gal a piece of my mind, too. Yeah, there she is. You can talk to her. I'll go and draw up the charges against her. Yeah, well, Miss... Serves your right to be in jail. Oh, please don't be angry with me. I'm so sorry for what I've done. Hmm. That sweet talk and that pretty face ain't going to help you none. Well, Andy, what are you going to say to this hardened criminal? Hello. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm really a criminal. I took that bag because I was broke and desperate. 
I thought I could sell it and get my fare to my home in Georgia. You don't know what it is to be hungry and alone in a big city. I didn't even get a chance to open the suitcase. I was taking it to the pawn shop when they picked me up. Oh, you didn't open it at all. That's wonderful. You didn't know, but in addition to everything else, there was over $1,000 worth of jewelry in that bag. Oh, my. Uh, say, officer. Yeah? Uh, uh, where is the suitcase now? Well, I knew you boys were anxious about it, so after we checked the contents to make sure the jewelry was still there, I had one of our men take it over to your checking stand about an hour ago. Oh, see, and I was just thinking, uh, that fellow's coming back for a suitcase at 10 o'clock this morning. We better make sure that he gets it before he starts sooner. Yeah, you sir. But say, officer, can we use your phone here right quick? Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, uh, that's a good idea, Kingfish. You know, I told Lightning to take care of the stand. So we yeah, well, uh, uh, Lightning, uh, 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 you see, uh, wait a minute. Uh, hello, uh, Lightning? Uh, listen, uh, about that bag uh, the policeman brought in. Oh, you got it, huh? Good. Well, now, look here. The owner will call for it around 10 o'clock, so it's already handed over. Okay. Goodbye, Lightning. Well, what about these charges against this girl? Uh... Let's drop them, Kingfish. We didn't lose nothing. Okay, and uh, Drop them? Well, if that's what you want to do, it's, it's out of our hands. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and here's five dollars, miss, to help you out with your train fare. Oh, thank you. You're the sweetest man I ever met. Ha, ha, ha. I is? <laughs> well, come on, Tyrone. We ain't got time for all this stuff yet. No breakfast. Let's go over to the lunchroom, get something to eat, and go back to the stand. Well, Lightning, everything under control here? Ah, uh, yeah, sir. The owner of that bag stopped by a few minutes ago, Miss Kingfish, and picked it up. Yeah, well, that's a load off our hands, Lightning. I bet that fellow was glad to get it. Ah, uh, what do you mean? The one that picked up the bag was a woman in a red dress. Amos, you hear all that business about going around the world in a large-sized box of Rinso? Uh, yeah, but that ain't exactly it, Andy. The winner of Lever's sensational new contest, Andy... We'll win a trip around the world for two or ten thousand dollars in cash. Your Rinso dealer has all the information, so when you buy a large sized box of Rinso tomorrow, ask about it. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. <laughs> In the March of Dimes, infantile paralysis knows no mercy. Infantile paralysis must be stopped, but it can't be stopped without your help. Send all the dimes and dollars you can spare to your local March of Dimes headquarters. Join the March of Dimes. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Pure Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Until then, good night to all of you from all of us. Doctors have proved it. Life Boy Health Soap with its purifying ingredients gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, doctors compare daily baths with leading soaps. Proved you are cleaner, safer from B.O. with Life Boy. Get Life Boy right away. The February issue of Reader's Digest contains a fine story about Amos and Andy. It's on the newsstands this week. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy show at this same time next Sunday. Stay tuned in now for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately over many of these stations. where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System.